Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraben, you here for another Legacy video. Today's video is sponsored by Cardsphere.com as well as Moxfield.com, and we'll take a look at them later this video. Today we're going to be playing with another Shouldred kind of discard draw decklist, courtesy of Derek C. Um, Shouldred is a card that is increasingly proving itself as either a main deck or sideboard option in Legacy. A completely reasonable main deck card in mono black decks, and oftentimes a reasonable sideboard card in decks like Doomsday. Today we're going to push the Jankometer up to 11, and we're going to try playing a handful of cards to support Shouldred, um, one of which is Burning Inquiry. So this is a very random card that sometimes has been used in Madness decks, but with Shouldred, if each time you're drawing one of those cards, you gain two life, and when your opponent draws a card, they lose two life, you get a huge life point swing out of that card. It's also something that can help you get rid of extra copies of Chrome Mox, Dark Ritual, and such that might not be great in the late game if they get stuck in your hand. But what the, what's that? It's Waste Knot with the Steel Chair. Just playing Burning Inquiry with Shouldred kind of leaves you in a rough spot where you probably don't actually have enough copies of like those two cards together to make it reasonable. But if your opponent discards three cards, maybe gives you more black mana, lets you cast a him, that gets you more mana, yada 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 yada, it can be pretty cute. Um, and we're going to see if it ends up being cute or good. And coupled with this, we have a couple of hate cards, like Chains of Mephistopheles, and a card that often sees play in group hug decks, and like EDH, and Anvil of Begarden. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card, then discards a card. And if we have Shouldred or Waste Not in play, all of a sudden that looks really good for us. Otherwise, most of the rest of what's here is going to look like a traditional mono black deck, uh, with the exception that we do have some red elemental blasts in the sideboard, and those can be answer to combo cards like show and tell, or maybe removal spells for, say, a Merktide region. Um, yeah, um, one of the things that's a little bit sketchy, but I'm not going to take it out of the deck, is Gyre Reach Sanitarium. This is a pretty reasonable land, just generally speaking. The issue here is not with the power level of the land, because I think it synergizes well with a lot of the things that I have going on in the deck. The issue is that it does not produce a black pip, which very much is going to matter in trying to cast some of my spells on curve. I think you can get away with one. I don't think you can get away with more than one. Um, all right, uh, with that being said, I think I'm going to go ahead and jump into the matches here, see how this deck feels. I think it's been a probably two weeks since shoulder has been on the channel, and uh, honestly, that's too long. <laughs> If you're new here and you like what you see today, please consider subscribing, and if you're a regular, throw me a like before this video begins. It's the easiest way to support my content for free. If you find yourself in the financial position to support my content, please consider uh, subscribing on Patreon, becoming a YouTube member, or doing a donation deck list. Alright, let's battle. I'm not gonna lie to you, I just realized that there's Blood Crypts in my deck list. Okay, uh, missed that in the deck tech, should have mentioned that. Okay, um... I feel like this one's a no. Uh, I don't have anything to pair with these burning inquiries. I would rather go to five. I can do some powerful things off a of dark ritual. Oh my god, why? Yeah, <laughs> opponent in chat is just like, no. <laughs> uh, I'm going to three. This is the most reasonable hand that I have seen thus far. I will hope that my opponent dies to a singular Shouldred, hopefully on turn two. Oh my god. I'm going to concede to any sort of discard spell that looks at my hand. Starting the video off strong. Alright, once upon a time. I honestly might just concede after I figure out what deck my opponent is on, if I don't think I can win. Alright, I have seen Endurance. Do I think I am going to reasonably win this game? No. I'm not going to play any cards, I'm going to wait to just see what my opponent has, and then I'm going to concede. Not a great way to start off a video, but it feels correct. 
Once upon a time, endurance, cabal, therapy. Um, uh, maybe some sort of Nickfit or Aluren style deck list. Um, regardless, I don't think I'm winning the game. I'm comfortable conceding. I'm probably not really going to sideboard much. I conceptually like the idea of Opposition Agent, given what I've seen, and I like the idea of Dalthy Voidwalker. Let's go Chains out for the Opposition Agents and then find another random cut for Voidwalker. Probably just an Anvil. <laughs> My opponent says, two things I know about playing against you. You know when to concede, and I never want to play Cabal Therapy against you. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I'm not going to... I'm not going to adjust my deck more than just this with the information that I have. I think I value my opponent miss sideboarding while I represent a reasonable deck more than I value trying to just angle in on sideboarding for the like perfect exact matchup. What the fuck deck? I, no. This is an incredibly slow hand, um, but I guess I'm going to keep it. This is really disappointing. Uh, land go. Yeah, uh, okay. Alright, opponent's got their land drop. It looks like that's all they've got going on. Okay, Dalthy Voidwalker turns this into a pretty reasonable hand. That can have a one drop or rather, 2-drop, 3-drop, 4-drop curve. Alright, opponent's fetching. It's an overgrown tomb. Get Death Shadows in there? Or do you just want more copies of Bayou, like I want more copies of Badlands? Okay, good, good luck with your Cabal Therapy. Okay, Helm of Obedience is a very reasonable name. Ooh. I believe I am still just going to go ahead and play this. Go ahead and plus, um, likely getting rid of Sudden Edict here. And next turn I can play Waste Knot and then plus again, or um, Jeldred if I draw a land. There's a Fluster Storm. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and crash on in. I think my opponent has boarded for combo. I don't think that Fluster Storm is a game one card. Now I can't prove that. Just the vibe I have. All right, Tropical Island. My earlier guess that this might be something in the, like, Aluren-ish ballpark is maybe still reasonable. Okay, we're sitting there with a green mana tapped for a second. I don't know exactly what that represents. Planet Growth, Green Sun, Assassin's Trophy. That's reasonable. Got plenty of basic swamps here. Note, I do have Assassin's Trophy um, under Dalthy Voidwalker now. Let's resolve a Shouldred. I think I am going to continue to crash in. I don't know whether or not my opponent is a control deck or a combo deck yet. I'm still trying to parse this Overgrown Tomb. But given that I have a Shouldred in play, I think it's better to just try and kill my opponent. Because this is 7 damage plus another 2 from Shouldred next turn. Like, my opponent could just, like, tap out for a Lurin and I can die. But, like, with Shouldred in play, I don't know that an Lurin even beats me. Green Sun's totally fine. Okay, there is Veteran Explorer. I have a choice about whether or not I actually, uh, want to attack with this. Shouldred. Just ramps my opponent, right? So I can instead attack them for 7, or sorry, attack them to 7... They take two on their turn. Yeah, I can just set this up so they're dead next turn without ramping them with Douthy Voidwalker. That's probably a good idea. I'm playing my stuff pre-combat here to see if I want to, like, fluster something with Douthy Voidwalker rather than uh, attack with it for three points of damage. Um, but things feel pretty good here. Like, I have lethal with both Douthy Voidwalkers surviving. I have lethal with one Douthy and Shouldred surviving. Like, I'm good. Okay, so now I can do some adjustments in sideboarding here. I'm not exactly sure 
and what my opponent is playing still. The one of um, Shockland is still throwing me off a little bit. It could just be a different named card for Field of the Dead. I think that's reasonable. That's going to be my working hypothesis. So it's possible that I want more stuff like this to get rid of large cards that can be fetched via Green Sun. Possible I want some stuff like this for Ice Fang Quattles. I think there's a world where my opponent uses their graveyard as a resource. Super on board with that in those worlds. The Sudden Edict is just like awkward versus Veteran Explorer in particular, but otherwise is pretty reasonable. I think I'm going to submit like this. It's possible I should just burn out the boarding inquiries and eliminate most of the cute things that this deck can do, though. Speaking of cute things this deck can do, um, this is a cape. I will play turn to waste knot into potentially a very gross double burning inquiry turn three game plan. You make a little therapy, me friend. Hello and good luck. I do not see you hitting here. Yeah, Dalthy Voidwalker. I think I'm supposed to play the tapped <clears throat> Blood Crypt on turn one. I haven't seen a Wasteland from my opponent yet. See what they get up to here. They can Green Sun for one and then Cabal Therapy me, taking multiple Burning Inquiries or the Waste Knot, and like it can be awkward. Okay, yeah, or they can have it naturally. Very good. Like, my hand loses a lot. Um, I think they're supposed to take the Waste Knot here. Search up. Swamps. I would name the Waste Knot if I were them, although I could understand wanting to take the two for one. Okay, they are taking the two for one. I think that's dangerous because, like, they gave me two mana so that I can just play Waste Knot into him to Turok. Okay, sure, that's fine then. Um, yeah, this is all okay with me. I would love to draw something to do with my mana this turn. Thank you, land. Very cool. All right, uh, we'll get that, uh, air quotes combo going and uh i'm fully reliant on the top of my deck to do stuff now this helps a little bit another land drop from my opponent four mana that's a green sun be like a rex sage to get rid of my waste knot is a grist that is very reasonable this is a great card to have. I don't think I can just play it out into the Grist. Um, I think I'm going to do this whole thing for a minute here. Uh, so let's activate this. Oh man, I don't want to be hitting more lands here. I'll discard Bloodstained Mire. Oh, neat. Dryad Arbor counts as both a creature and a land for this. Uh, which is... <laughs> yeah, opponent says two for one on that one. Haven't seen that come up before. Neat. Uh, yeah. Good stuff. So now that I have a 2-2 two -two in play... Oh no, I can't play Shouldred. Oh no, I can play Shouldred. Well, I mean... Yeah, right? I'll, I'll bite on that. Like, my opponent can, like, minus... Kill... Shouldred, lose this insect token, then I attack and kill Grist if they don't have another thing. Okay. What the hell is that? Um, enters tapped. Sacrifice to return target creature from your graveyard to your hand. Sure. Oh, that's annoying. Or no, that's, that's not Ram and App. I mean, that's still annoying. I, I thought it was Ram and App for a second, and then, like, Ram and App, Dryad Arbor, Grist, uh, was about to be rough. Okay, my opponent has named Liliana. I don't currently have. I would love to have it in a second here. I am about to lose my shouldered to the grist. If I draw something that can get this out of the way, that would be cool. It would be pretty hot to draw. <laughs> oh, man. I have three mana for Liliana and the mana to just activate this. Oh, that's super cool. My opponent probably doesn't have two Dryad Arbors, because it looks like their mana base is built for... Uh, like Primeval Titan Field of the Dead. Alright. Let's activate this and see what happens with the whole Waste Knot thing. I will absolutely discard Chromox. 
Oh, nice. I get to draw a card. Ooh, Opposition Agent. I think I am supposed to just Lily this turn, but Opposition Agent is pretty clutch. I will get punished by my opponent drawing Primeval Titan 100% of the time here. But, like, they're, they're Hellbent. I get to kill a Planeswalker. And, like, I have this Waste Knot, Guy Reach Sanitarium engine online after that. Which is admittedly pretty good right now. All right. Wing in on Grist. Okay. Now, they have to naturally draw Primeval Titan. It cannot be Green Sun for it. So, like, there's a 1 in 45 chance that they draw a Primeval Titan. I think I'm okay with that. It is another Cabal Therapy. That is not what they are looking for here. They're going to get to see my opposition agent coming. They have named Shouldred. Oh, man. Burning Inquiry is cool. Probably just play one of these, though. Or I guess I'll do this like this. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, now we'll cast a Burning Inquiry. So we each draw three, discard three. <laughs> uh, this is cool. So I get to draw two cards and make a zombie. Now I can go ahead and make a land drop. Activate Gyre Reach Sanitarium. Guard the Chrome Mox. Get Black Black. Uh, which I don't actually want to do anything with here, I don't think. Just want to plus with this. Guard him to Torok. Returns it to hand, right? Yep. I'll go ahead and crash in. I've got an onboard edict for if my opponent wants to return a creature next turn. And I've shut off the Green Sun package, which I think is one of the things that I care about quite a bit. Got a Planeswalker, so I'm resilient to Pernicious Deed. Upon a time is decent selection, but I don't know that it's really enough here. That is an Uro. Um, which honestly just gives me some things to, like, have my opponent discard. So I think that's ultimately okay for me. Alright, Thoughtsies is fine. Do a little Tradesies. Um, Dowthy Voidwalker is worth playing out. Let's go ahead and do that. While we are both Hellbent, I'll plus Lily. I'll go ahead and activate this. Discard Swamp. I want to just discard it a land. I don't need that mana. Crash in for half my opponent's life total. We'll bring them to six. And then I should be able to Lily minus Uro out of the way and hit for nine next turn. Oh, actually, opponent doesn't even have blue blue. All right, there is a Valakut. Uh, that should be the GG. All right. Guy Reach Sanitarium was good in Legacy. All right, they can return a Dryad to hand, and uh, there's the concession. Today's video is sponsored by Cardsphere.com. Cardsphere is a service that allows you to buy, sell, and most importantly, trade your magic cards with other people and game stores from around the world. As you can see here, they are doing a lot of business. They only take a very small fee, 3%, and if you decide you want cash instead of cards, you can also get paid out via PayPal for a small cut. P.S. They also have articles, so please consider checking them out. So this opening hand is really going to need one more mana, but it's pretty reasonable looking. It's going to be Thoughtseize on turn one, Waste Not turn two, Lily on turn three in a lot of worlds. But if my opponent's mulliganing to five in their reanimator, um, I might need to play out Douthy Voidwalker um, earlier. Oh no. Odin is going to four cards here. Alright, so unless I'm dead on turn one, my discard probably really disrupts what my, my opponent has going on over there. Marsh Flats is a relatively uncommon land. Wonder if we're playing against something in like the maybe like a Stone Blade or Cephalid Breakfast family. Oh nope. We're reanimating. We're reanimating. Okay, no creature in the graveyard. That's very good for me. Dark Ritual would be my best draw here. Nope. I am going to go ahead and thin the deck of a land here. 
I'm gonna make it look like a reanimator mirror. I will thought seize you. Taking a reanimate, leaving my opponent with only a bad lands. Disgusting. Okay. So this Douthy Voidwalker probably wins the game on the spot. It's not like a hundred percent, but it's pretty damn close. Because like now the best my opponent could do is hard cast one of those creatures. Alright. The neat looking swamp. Ooh, shoulder it on my end. I'll go ahead and play a lily. Go ahead and plus. I don't think I need two waste knots. Like right now, I really just want to get a shouldered in play. Like I don't want this shouldered to end up in my graveyard. Oh, it says Voidwalker is such a solid card. Love seeing it see play. Same friend, same. It's also just nice to have a game one hate card for graveyards that is also just a reasonable threat and sometimes value card. All right, I don't have ley lines. I have surgicals. I have another Douthy Voidwalker. I have opposition agent, and sudden edict is playable. I think this is probably a time where I have to cut the entire cute side of the deck to play the good cards, because, like, Reanimator is a scary matchup. Like, we got lucky for game one there. How do I feel about Waste Knot? Okay. I feel like I'm going to cut one of Waste Knot or him here. Waste Knot's really nice if my opponent casts a Faithless Looting, though. That's a thing. Um, let's junk a Waste Knot, although I'm not 100% certain about that. Also, um, it's kind of neat that my opponent is going to be expecting Leyline of the Void, and I don't have Leyline of the Void, so my opponent might be answering to something that beats Leyline, and then I get them with Surgical. My hand is really good here, and I would keep this if I was on the play. I don't think this is good enough on the draw. I'm gonna go ahead and ship this. I will ship this one as well. Like, I know, I know what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a hand with Surgical Extraction or the ability to cast, like, Discard Spell into Douthy Voidwalker or Dark Ritual into Douthy Voidwalker. This is a tough one. I can just keep a five-card hand that looks like this. It doesn't have any graveyard hate, but it has, like, stable mana and stuff to do. But I don't think this wins. I don't think this wins. I think this doesn't lose in the first couple turns, but I don't think it wins. Whereas I think this one wins a good portion of the time. Chromox goes back. Sudden Edict goes back. And then it's a little tough between these two. I think I'm going to keep the him. Um, I wish I could keep another land here. I can't, but that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, grief is unfortunate. That's going to take my surgical and uh, really put a damper on my plans. More so than anything else, it's just frustrating that my opponent knows that I have Surgical now for, like, Game 3 purposes. If I have Surgical, I probably don't have Leyline. So the scariest thing for me is if their hand is now in Tomb plus two different reanimation spells. Like, that's the world where things get scary for me. Oh. Awkward? I mean, I guess I'm taking the Faithless looting, but... That means that my Hymn to Turok is not looking particularly strong. Interesting. Opponent grabbed a basic there. I mean, they have something like Magus of the Moon in their deck. I mean, I'm on a mulligan to four. I'm not going to do a lot here. Oh, are you going to loot immediately? You're not going to loot immediately. Um, this Dark Ritual hopefully will allow me to put a shoulder into play. I don't think it's uh, worth hemming my opponent's Grizzle Brand for two of my cards here. This is three mana, presumably for the looting. And now I'm in a bit of a scary situation. Because once Grizzle Brand is in the yard, every reanimation spell becomes something that probably beats me. Alright, Grizzle Brand's in the yard. So, choice. I can hem my opponent's last card. Or I can put Shouldered into play. I think I have to just him my opponent's last card. I think there's just too high of a chance that it is a reanimation spell of some kind. 
Oh, it was a Douthy Voidwalker of their own. Interesting. Okay, sure, sure, sure. So, gonna have to get a little lucky and dodge here. Okay, that's a land. That's great for me. That gives me a chance to go ahead and just play out this Shouldred, which is a pretty reasonable clock. Like, uh, it's, it's six damage per turn cycle. So it is, it is a three turn clock. But I have to trade. I have to trade. I have to fade three different draw steps, which is asking so 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 much. I do not like my odds here. Opponent says flooding with thirteen lands. Um, I don't know that you were supposed to play that one. Oh, that's one of the worst draws in my deck. There. Um, they're maybe supposed to keep that land for if they draw faithless looting, or to like help pad versus a Liliana. Um, not 100% sure though. So they might have things that they're working towards hard casting as well. Um, this is worth playing at sorcery speed before I attack, I think. Oh, there's an unmask. Bash in for four. In good news, opponent will now not be able to play reanimate. They're going to be at four life. The reanimate is off the table. All right, we have gotten the GGs. Uh, we'll take that. We're 2-0. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com. Moxfield is a deck building website for Magic the Gathering, and they have a ton of functionality just beyond building decks. So for example, you know, let's say you're making a whole bunch of changes to your deck list while you're at work and you want to goldfish your deck over your lunch hour, you can do so via Moxfield. You can tap your lands, you can play your cards, draw, even view your entire library if you need to. So please consider checking out this website. They support my content. Okay, um, I think I'm going to keep my hand. I get a turn one him to Turok into a turn two him to Turok. The Burning Inquiry is maybe not the best as of right now, but I can hopefully find something to do with it later. Uh, and my opponent has revealed a Yorian deck. So I took two of their lands, which is maybe insane or maybe terrible. We'll kind of see based on what they do in the first couple of turns. Well, Vile is great if I'm going to take my opponent's lands. Um, second verse, same as the first. All right. I've gotten some great two for ones here. I would love to just draw like Waste Knot off the top and then play, you know, just Waste Knot Burning Inquiry. Opponent is going to get to play a very reasonable game of magic despite being double hymned, which is not what I want to see. Do not believe that I am interested in just playing Burning Inquiry for the sake of playing Burning Inquiry. I'm also not going to fetch and play around Aven Mind Sensor here. I think it's too important to just leave this land in play and stay flexible with it in case I need a second red source. And I'm going to get upkeep ported. Chains. I mean, yeah, I guess I'll play that. So there's chains. And now I could turn Burning Inquiry into a looting. Is that something I am interested in? I don't think it is. I think I'll wait on that. Their vial goes up to three. Like, I think I'm willing to Burning Inquiry on my next turn. When I have access to some more mana. I don't think I'm just super interested in that effect immediately. Got some synergy here. I really want, like, a Waste Knot or a Shouldred. Those are my big payoffs here. Alright, let's fetch. Didn't get even Mind Censored. Badlands. Burning Inquiry. Okay, that's fine. Oh, Skyclaving the Chains. Sure, so this will be fully random now. Okay, him to Turok and Shouldered left in my hand. Pretty happy with that. So let's him my opponent. We got Cauldra and Planes. I got to play Shouldered next turn, uh, which is either going to do nothing or be very good depending on whether or not my opponent has Caracas. Shouldered was just a little bit too far down in my deck. If it was just a couple cards earlier, fuck me, uh, it would have been very strong. Um, yeah, that Caracas is rough for me here. Uh huh. Lilies may be good. I will play Lily. 
I will go ahead and edict this and get a 2-2. The issue here is that my opponent is about to have a relatively large Yorian. This is going to be a pain in my butt. And it can, like, come in at instant speed. Uh-huh. But I had to clear out the Skyclave, otherwise they got to just bounce that and invalidate a bunch of my upcoming plays. This isn't so bad, though. So Lily plus, I'll discard this Shouldred. That isn't going to do me a lot of good this game. Opponent has discarded a land. I'll bash in with a 2-2. Opponent is just taking it. I'll pass with Sudden Edict available. Opponent will put this in. As long as this spell is on the stack, players can't cast spells or activate abilities that are not mana abilities. Split second is playing around the Caracas that my opponent thought was going to protect their stuff. Um, I made a small mistake here. I should have let them um, resolve the Yorian trigger first. Yeah, so now they get to reset their Aether Vial, whereas they might have left it on 5 otherwise. So, small small misstep on my end. Alright, double Rishadon port. That's totally fine. So I'm going to lose access to main phase red mana. Another Sudden Edict. Um, I am not willing to plus Liliana in this situation. Like, although I really do want to keep my um, Lily ticking up, this card is just too valuable. Okay, no play from my opponent. Uh-huh. Same thing again. I can just discard a Thoughtseize here. Plus, see if Mother of Runes is their one card. It's Source of Plowshares instead. By Thoughtseize. I'm in an advantaged position. I don't know that I'd fully call it a good position. Because all it's going to take is my opponent ripping one Recruiter of the Guard type card um, for me to be in a bad position. Uh, this is a mistake on my opponent's end. They are absolutely supposed to vile in that. Yeah, I think Viling in Stoneforge and casting Batter Skull is so much better than that line. I'm going to go ahead and float mana this time around. See if they break it up between phases. Alright, so... Liliana Edict you. I'll pass my turn here. I'll then Sudden Edict to the Lion Sash. Uh-huh. I'll just get that out before they can possibly draw something and put it in to protect that. The Lion's Ash would scale up very quickly. File does go to three. This is a pretty big turn. So I'm going to get ported. So Anvil. Any of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card and discards a card. So they, in their draw step, they draw an additional card and discard a card. Does that happen before their actual draw for turn? If that happens before the actual draw for turn, I just win the game? No, because I don't. I won't have the threat in play first. I'm gonna look at some rules. Okay, with a quick Google, it looks like the draw for turn happens first. So if I play Anvil, the draw for turn happens. When the anvil happens, you can't draw another card, you discard a card. So I probably don't want to play this. My opponent could use their Aether Vial to instant speed stuff. Okay. Let's play a Dalthy Voidwalker. I'll go ahead and plus this to threaten an edict and force my opponent to attack. Oh, I think my opponent's favored here. We're just at that point of the game where every value-oriented card is just too good. Like every every Solitude, every Recruiter of the Guard, every Stoneforge Mystic, yeah. Yep. Okay. Waste Knot is actually going to be a little bit worse than normal with Spirit of the Labyrinth in play. I think I'm just going to lose this one in short order, though. Okay. They've got a land drop. I take six. I probably have three turns in me, but that's a probably. I also don't get to ever use red mana, and it becomes harder for me to cast more expensive cards. All right. Play that tapped. I'm just in a bad position here. Like, my initial Hymn to Turox did very good things, 
but I didn't have the pressure necessary to follow it up, right? Like, my opponent's still at 19. Like, had I hit a Shouldred before my opponent had the Caracas, or had I hit a Waste Knot earlier, I'm totally fine this game, but I just didn't. Alright, I get ported off two lands. Dark Ritual doesn't do anything here. Um, I believe I'm no longer on outs to win. I go ahead and concede here. So I like Opposition Agent and Plague Engineer. I like Sudden Edict. Douthy Voidwalker's okay. Inquisitions are okay. I don't think I want Blasts for Yorian. I think that's too narrow. Um, given the Spirit of the Labyrinth type stuff, I don't think I'm super interested in those cards. I also don't know that I'm even interested in the red mana in my deck. So I think I want to play these six cards, which would mean two more cuts. And Inquisitions are not good, but reasonable. I can play this out like so and try to largely play a mono black game. I lose a little bit of power um, with the burning inquiries. I think that's okay. More so than anything else, I'm just worried about like my shoulders just being bounced by my opponent's 4x Caracas. Um, so conceptually, I'm not a huge, huge fan of what's going on here. Um, this is not bad, but double castle locked wains entering tapped are super awkward. Like, I can play Chrome Mox, imprint something, cast Thoughts he's on one into him on turn two, or into Torok turn two, Lily plus after that. But I don't think this is better than Mulliganing. I think if either one of those lands was a swamp, the hand is a snap keep. Uh, I'm going to keep this one and hope that it reasonably improves. Um, this is just land go, probably into Douthy Voidwalker, but I might just slam Turok down early, or I might slam Waste Knot down early. It really depends. I just don't want my opponent to play Aether Vial here. Um, given that draw, I think I'm supposed to play Waste Knot this turn. Um, we are going to just fetch basic swamps and be nice and insulated from the stuff that my opponent is doing here. And uh, hopefully I get to do cool shit with Waste Knot. Dark Ritual, I guess, would be cool as a draw. Oh yeah, I'm totally good with getting ported here. Thoughtseize, target you. Holy fuck. That's so much goddamn value. I guess I start taking recruiters? Gah. Okay. No, this is fine. Um, this is fine. It's actually okay if I draw something like a Hymn to Turok that can discard multiple cards at the same time, or if I draw a Dark Ritual so that I can cast Turok. Like, everything is A-OK -okay in those worlds. So there goes a Plains. Okay, they are just going to try to choke me on mana. Miss that. Um, guess I'll crash in for my attack first. Gaw. Okay, that's fine. Thought sees target you. I, I think I continue attacking recruiters. Like Solitude's very good. But if I can take that last recruiter or take the card that the recruiter fetches, I think I'm in an okay position. You're gonna double port me? We're going to double port me. Sure. Okay, uh, small misstep from my opponent in not porting me in the draw step. Opponent says, oh no, my stop. Then there. Done that. So that means I get to slip uh, an important card into play. I think I just play out. Hmm. Actually interesting. If I play out Douthy Voidwalker, it just gets eaten by Solitude, but then I Sudden Edict that, or I Resolve Turok. I think I'm okay with those timelines. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and put the Douthy Voidwalker into play. Yeah, my opponent just reinstalled Magic Online, and when you do that, a lot of your default information is no longer stored. My opponent may choose to Wasteland my Castle Lockwain this turn, um, although I don't know. Like, they are under a decent amount of pressure. Okay, there's a Rashadden port, and there is the Sorcery Speed Solitude, which I can now Sudden Edict, although honestly, if I draw a land, I'm just going to kick a Turok. I did not draw a land, unfortunately, uh, which sucks because I might not have a good chance to play another spell for the rest of this game. Okay, there's Wasteland. 
There's a recruiter. Hmm. An interesting way to tap for that. Going for Stoneforge Mystic. Okay. That's reasonable. Finding Lion Sash. Sure. Give me a Hymn to Turok. I haven't been able to catch a break here in terms of actually getting to my fourth mana. This game's so over if I do. Um, I'm always crashing in with this. When it goes to 14, I'm debating whether or not I just want to play Turok as something that blocks Lion Sash right now while I know that I can get it into play. I think instead... Hmm... And Sudden Edict in my upkeep in the future if I get Rashad imported. I think I'm going to try to save the Turok and just Sorcery Speed this Sudden Edict. My situation's not great. Like, I haven't gotten the value out of the Waste Knot that I wanted to get out of my Waste Knot. There's the whole Lion Sash. And my hope is that my opponent commits a lot of their mana to Lion Sash rather than porting me. Yeah, I'm at 18. Okay. It begins. They are going to port me here. Okay, see, this is exactly what I needed. Dark Ritual. Picked Turok. My opponent discards two cards, and then something beautiful happens. Oh, wow, my opponent has a second Lion Sash. All right, so I get to draw a card and make a zombie there. My opponent has a 2-2 Lion Sash and no mana available, so this is a reasonable attack. Um, basically, I don't want my opponent to draw Caracas to bounce my Turok, and I think as long as I dodge Caracas, I am in very good shape. Um, complicates things a little bit. It's just on a return clock from Turok, assuming no other things happen, with no real reasonable way to stop that. What can Yorian batch with a Critter of the Guard? Probably nothing that deals with Turok directly. Oh, hell yeah. So 100% of the time, this takes my opponent's Yorian. I'm fine just doing that now. That turns Turok into a 5 power creature. Am I fine attacking in with the zombies and losing one to Lion Sash to deal two more damage? Yes. Or I guess it's more of an attempt to deal two damage. The opponent can technically chump block with Recruiter of the Guard if they see that it changes the clock, uh, which they did notice. Okay, yep. You, you can eat cards from the graveyard. That is acceptable. So... Opponent is at 7. They're no longer dead on board to Turok, but they are dead if a zombie co token manages to connect. Fuck me. There are very few cards that answer Turok. My opponent found one of them. Okay, no attack with Lion Sash. I'm going to get ported once. I can put another Waste Knot into play for the future. Um, but I no longer get to attack. The other awkward thing is that most of the time my opponent now is not going to have a card in hand for me to discard, so I can't get the most, like, waste not value anymore. Got, like, Plague Engineers that I can draw that can get rid of Mother of Runes, but this is the same thing that happened last time around, where, like, when we reach this mid-game, or I guess, like, truly this is the late game, my opponent just has big dumb things that they can draw like that. Oh, they didn't, uh, they didn't cycle it. And cycle it, which counts as discard. Alright, so we're at the mercy of my opponent drawing a uh, Caracas here. Or I guess like Solitude and Source of Plowshares are also good, but like I have a relevant clock in play now. Sure, the Labyrinth is good. Take some damage in the air. That's okay with me. Okay. Says opponent, right? Says opponent. Uh-huh, yeah, that's fine. Do it again. Okay. Uh, so I think I'm just pumping the brakes on here and trying to hope that Shouldered can get the kill. Um, the awkward thing here is that, like, if my opponent draws an out to Shouldered, they can very easily switch to being the beatdown by giving Lion Sash pro black and just trying to kill me in two turns. Okay, Timeless Dragon is understandably coming in. 
I'm dead next turn. This is just lethal damage next turn. My shoulder puts them to one. So I'm going to need another point of damage somehow. Okay, I gained two life here. I think my opponent's card is a source of plowshares. They started to tap a planes at one point. So I guess let's find out. Fuck, it's a solitude. If I cast this thought seize, they just get to do it in response. So I guess I'm just chilling and hoping that my opponent messes up. So end of turn, they play solitude. They junk my shouldred. I go to 16. There's not actually that much life in this exact circumstance. Uh-huh. Yeah, you can you can eat stuff. I'm basically dead here. Like my opponent can protect on Lion Sash and pretty much put me to lethal amounts of damage. Okay, they're gonna go ahead and move it to the flyer. That's another way to accomplish a similar goal. That's a two-turn clock now. Or so oh sorry, they're moving it to the life linker. That's pretty good. But this does allow me to do this. So I can just jump block here. So they like they're not losing the game after gaining that life. But I also have time to draw out of this now in a way that I didn't just a second ago. So that's something. Another waste knot. Unsure. Uh actually. Sorry, I shouldn't actually auto yield here. My opponent has a card in hand. I guess we're going in. Badlands or just swamp? Just swamp. Thoughtsies target you. Mom, get three zombies. Okay. We have a game of Magic the Gathering. I think my opponents won. Like, they just need to get this slightly larger, give protection, and kill me. Actually, am I dead this turn? Yeah, I'm dead this turn. Okay, yeah. I think they see the line. Oh, did they just eat? Oh, they just ate a thought seize. No, okay. Okay, there's protection. And that is lethal. Yeah, uh, my opponent top decked, you know, maybe a one of Council's Judgment to uh, answer Turok. Um, although, Turok is also would have been an answer. So, like, they had, you know, what, like 5 out and 65 cards or something like that to not be dead? GG's. The Solitude at the end, um, missing Inquisition, um, also wasn't great for me. Okay, we've gotten paired against another Yorian deck. We can play a Chains on turn 1 into like a turn 3 Shouldred. I don't know if this hand's actually good. Like, it's kind of almost good. Like, Chains Burning Inquiry is something that's cute, but it's not generating something for me that actually kills my opponent. Because, like, I can play Swamp, Chrome Mox, Imprint, Shouldered, Chains on turn 1 into Burning Inquiry on turn 2. That kind of puts us in a Hellbent situation really quickly, because essentially we're going to loot 3 times and then discard 3. So, like, that'll clear hands. And I'll have 3 mana sources in play to my opponent's 1 mana source. Is that fine? Maybe? Let's see how it feels. It feels weird. My opponent's a blue Yorian deck. I feel like this is totally reasonable. And if they're not a blue Yorian deck and this is just death and taxes, like this is just not going to work out for me. Probably scariest if my opponent just like plays planes Aether Vial on turn one. Okay, that did not happen. Let's see where this goes. All right, so I discard. Probably just want to keep the swamp. Or I guess it doesn't really matter, right? Because, like, ev everything's just going away. So I've taken out a whole bunch of my opponent's lands, and I'm now reliant on the top of my deck to kind of do cool things. I don't know that this is just good enough. Uh, had any other card other than Thalia been played, that would have been quite strong. I do not want to be playing against Death and Taxes with this deck. I have too many permanents that are just good targets for Skyclaves. And a lot of the things like Chains that are supposed to serve as a hate card are just not going to be good. I think I'm going to concede the game here if my opponent just gets, like, Cauldra. Yeah, they just got Cauldra. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable conceding here. I'm, I'm not going to beat that Cauldra in play, and I can't play this Lily here. 
All right. Um, so boarding is going to be more or less the same as last round, I think. For reasons, as we just saw, we board out chains. For Spirit of the Labyrinth type reasons, we get rid of Anvil. Become a mono black deck. For my last couple of cuts, everything else is now reasonable. I did not board in all of this stuff, so like I definitely board those in. Oh no, I just can't count. Okay, cool. Okay. This is probably a keep. I think I imprint the Douthy Voidwalker here. Either the Douthy Voidwalker or the Turok, I think. It actually might be the Turok, because it's hard to get for me for me to get that last black mana to kick this. A much better card than Douthy Voidwalker in the matchup, though. I will go ahead and accordingly imprint that. And I think I am supposed to him first. It's just, like, kind of awkward. Because, like, him is not particularly good versus death and taxes. There is a Chrome Mox. I don't think I am supposed to play that card. Like, it's very tempting to Chrome Mox Lily. And just kick Turok and just say, like, hey, this is my clock. I think it's probably better just to play out Lily, though, for the value that she offers. So, like, I get an Edict here, and then presuming that I draw either a land or a black spell, so basically any card other than the three Chrome Moxen that are still in the deck, or the two that are still in the deck, uh, it's a very good turn for me. So I'll go ahead and kick this. The opponent discards two cards at random. I'll go ahead and plus Lily, taking my opponent's final card. I have a 5-4 protection from my opponent's deck in play. And unless they draw exactly Tur uh, Caracas, I feel like I win this game in short order. But that's how it works, you know? Oh, uh, Waste Knot is incredibly good here. Although I am going to need to get this fucking Spirit of the Labyrinth out of play. Could have considered playing um, Turok out just to tax my opponent's mana for if they draw a three drop. Not sure whether or not that was a mistake. Like, it's my plan to loot this card away in a lot of worlds, though. Okay, that's kind of awkward. Who I want? Just throw this under here so that I can play Shouldered and such. I think I do. I don't think I want to play this Caracas dance all game. So each player can't draw more than one card each turn. So I can do Guy Reach Sanitarium safely on my opponent's turn, just not on my turn. This Yorian is going to be a major pain in the ass in a little while. Spirit of the Labyrinth can't really attack, I don't think. Well, okay, I guess my opponent knows what they have in hand. We'll go ahead and loot. I'm going to discard a Dark Ritual. Okay, yep. This is the timeline that I wanted. There we go. Get rid of the Spirit of the Labyrinth so that my Guy Reach Sanitarium is now better. Sudden Edict. I want to do that now. I think I have to do that right now. Uh, let's just discard the Dark Ritual. Oh, there is a 2-2 two -two for me. And I have Sudden Edict available. I will go ahead and Edict. I guess technically because of Aven Mind Sensor I should have uh, fetched on my own turn when my opponent had no cards. Goodbye Flicker Wisp. Opponent can now put Yori into hand if they want, but I don't think that's wise. Another Waste Knot. Do not mind if I do. Guess I attack now. Yeah. Opponent goes to 18. Activate this. Guard a card. Get a couple of Waste Knot triggers. Yeah. Spirit of the Labyrinth's super weird with Guy Reach Sanitarium and Waste Knot. So, like, if I have the Guy Reach Sanitarium in my opponent's draw step after they've drawn, I just activate it and make them discard their card. Pretty hot. I think I'm just going to submit. I am light on starting mana here. I can just play Dark Ritual into Waste Not Thoughtseize on turn one and hope that that problem solves itself between two draw steps and maybe a Waste Not draw off him the following turn. I think this hand has enough upside that I am going to go ahead and keep it. Alright, 
file is very good here. Chromox in particular would be a hot, hot, hot draw. Dark Ritual. I do believe it has to be the Waste Knot so that, like, if things go my way, I just absolutely pop the fuck off. I have to take that Stone Forge. Like, I really want to take the Swords to Plowshares and get a little lucky after that, but the Stone Forge represents too scary of a threat. I'm at, like, roughly 50% to hit a mana source in each draw step. They've got, like, 23 lands in the deck, plus Chromox, plus Dark Rituals. Like, I think I'm okay. And if I miss a land drop or two, it's not the end of the world, because as soon as I hit, I will pop the fuck off. My opponent not using Swords to Plowshares on my zombie token. As the turn counter ticks up, and I miss more land drops, like, my opponent will become more and more favored. Like, they just have chances to draw, like, Recruiter of the Guards and such. But this hand is so strong in so many timelines. Unfortunately, this is one of those timelines where I just never draw a land and then die. Which is a little frustrating. It's like, I am on so many hits here. Like, I'm... Okay, so 20, 23, 24, 25, 26... Yeah, so I am greater than 50% to draw a mana source every turn. Okay, sure. Alright, fantastic. So now, now I pop off. Alright, Badlands. Came to Turok targeting you. Which I assume elicits some degree of response. Does not. Alright, I got the Yorian and the Swords to Plowshares. I know my opponent has an Aganjo. Do I want to give them a chance to use it as a removal spell? Yeah, because otherwise they just play it as a land drop and it gets out of their hand anyway. That's okay. Alright, opponent's at 14. Opponent hasn't really hit well. So, like, I'm complaining about my own luck a little bit, but, like, my opponent has largely just flooded out. Shadenport is incredibly powerful for them because they get to wasteland me and then Rashadenport me off all my remaining mana. That's not to say that, like, they're favored on the current board or anything, but it's good for them. All right, bash in for four. All right, opponent has no three drop here. There is a Caracas, which means Turok and Shuldred are noticeably worse in the future. Okay, so opponent probably has um, solitude if they're not Rashad and porting me here. I think I play my land and attack, and then if it's Recruiter of the Guard into Solitude. I've got that covered. Okay, it is just regular old Solitude. Dunking one of my creatures. He did not want to take it out of play. Go ahead and play a Lily. Attempt to Edict my opponent. No Flicker Wisp, which is nice. So, unfortunately, I'm starting to reach this position where... My discard spells are going to be a little bit less potent. Okay, I know my opponent has an Aganjo still, so I can make my opponent discard that pre-combat. Um, I think that's time for Opposition Agent. I can play Plague Engineer next turn. Alright. This just insulates a little bit versus something like Recruiter of the Guard. Alright, so we plus. My opponent discards a land, which will give me two mana. Let's just get rid of, like, a Turok here. Alright, cool. So this gives me black, black. It allows me to play out a Douthy Voidwalker. No attack with Zombie Token into Thalia. Uh, so I think I need to dodge my opponent drawing an Equipment now. I think that's the big thing that I'm afraid of. Batter Skull is a major pain in the ass here. Timeless Dragon. That does... Very little for my opponent here. Let's go land drop. Plague Engineer. I can bounce that. Fine, I'll still put this on human. Do I want to plus Lily? No, I just want to Edict. Yeah, okay. GG's. I believe we're three and one now. Yeah, good stuff. All right, final round here. My hand is reasonable. I will be keeping... 
if yeah if memory serves my opponent was also playing mono black decks i played them a couple days ago so i'm not great versus some of the combo things that can happen but like i dodge a lot of stuff like opposition agent thoughtseize probably takes my hymn to turok oh another dark ritual sure oh fuck me okay i mean sometimes you have it all uh, nothing to be done there. Uh, a GG. Alright. So what do we have for a pseudo mirror? Yes. Probably, although it's awkward that that misses Helm. Edict's good. Opposition agents and plague engineers are playable. So, I think this is time where I cut the chains for the sudden edict and the Douthy Voidwalker. That's my starting point. Burning Inquiry Waste Knot is very real. Opposition Agent is just a 3-2 thing that attacks. This may be a time where I keep the Burning Inquiries to help burn my opponent out via Shouldred or do cool Waste Knot things, and I treat that as my combo finish. I, I ultimately have to race my opponent's Helm combo. I think I'm going to keep like this. It's a reasonable but unexciting hand that the value of this hand varies wildly depending on what my opponent starts on. If they're on like a Rotting Regisaur type hand, this hand's really good. And if they're on a Helm combo hand, this hand is underwhelming. I think it's still a keep. I would much rather have like a Dark Ritual Waste Knot hand versus this opponent. Alright, what do you got for me? Pass the turn. That doesn't mean they have nothing. Ooh, from Mox. I don't think I want to use that card, though. I think it's more valuable to just cast him to rock this turn than it is to cast Lily of the Veil. Take some random cards. Shouldred and Dark Ritual. I, I honestly kind of want my opponent to cast a Shouldred, though. Like, that's something I very clear, cleanly answer with Sudden Edict. Also going to set a stop on my own upkeep for the remainder of this match. Yeah, I don't care about that. Opponent has named Rogue for Opposition Agent. I think I'm just going to play Lily and plus it. Anvil's awkward right now. Yeah, I think I just play Lily plus Lily, take another card out of my opponent's hand, discard my Chrome Mox. I don't care about Lily's loyalty that much right now. It's possible I should just discard Anvil, though. Anvil might be worse in case in some weird timeline I need to double Sudden Edict next turn. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I discarded a Shouldred. I'll discard an Anvil. Or no, sorry, that was the previous Shouldred. Another Plague Engineer. I feel like I am in the driver's seat this game, but I think my opponent's deck is favored here. They have Wastelands. I don't think I like that from them. All right. Button plus. Start Chromox. It has Toxic Deluge. Sure. All right. Plague Engineer comes crashing in. I'll go ahead and Sudden Edict. I will use both of my Badlands to do that so that I can't be wastelanded off of things with weird timing. On it notably does not have Black Black currently because they are playing Wasteland, so if they had something like a Ley Line of the Void, they couldn't actually cast it. I'll plus Lily getting rid of Dark Ritual here. Keep Sudden Edict to better play around an Opposition Agent being flashed in. Yeah, see? Exactly. So, like, that Wasteland, while it knocked me off mana, also kept my opponent from casting their relevant spells, and the same thing is going to happen again here. Any black-black card that's in my opponent's hand is now uncastable. Wasteland and other colorless lands are not free in monocolor deck lists. Please keep this in mind. I will happily discard that Burning Inquiry. Opponent junked a Shouldred. Again, a black black card that was uncastable. A little awkward if my opponent flashes an opposition agent after discarding a card. But I think I'm supposed to plus the Lily here. It just puts me in ultimate range. Yeah. Dodged opposition agent that turn, which is great. Okay. Fantastic. Go ahead and continue to Lily Plus here. I want to discard Thoughtseize. I want to go ahead and upkeep Fetch here. Because if my opponent has Opposition Agent, they play it out at end of turn. 
Got Fetcha tapped, Blood Crypt. Okay. Do you have a 4 drop in hand to play? You do not. I guess I cast this. Because if my opponent has exactly Opposition Agent, I can still Edict. Okay. Oh, is it exactly? Okay, it's not Opposition Agent, but it's something similar. Very awkward for me. Um, so my opponent is now in the advantaged position because they are going to have a life-linking threat in play. That's fine. Again, though, like, I think I would have been dead to my opponent's multiple shouldreds if they were not playing Wasteland. Cool. Great top deck on my end. Although the plus ability is going to be noticeably worse here. Because now my opponent has the mana to cast their cards. Um, Turok's pretty good. Alright. So unfortunately, I cannot kick this. Oh wait, opponent has no cards, so it doesn't actually matter. We each discard a card. Nothing happened. Alright, opponent has a Douthy Voidwalker. Not think they should have played that out pre-combat. Okay, they didn't intend to attack. So if I minus my Lily, my opponent gets rid of their Turok and then puts a Lily under Douthy Voidwalker and probably starts pulling ahead. They don't get value out of my Lily unless I do that line. I guess I'm going to take that line. Alright. Kind of playing aggressively here. I, like, I'm trying to leverage the fact that my opponent is at a lower life total than I am. I'm just kind of hoping that with Anvil of the Garden helping me select my draw steps, I can find another threat and outpace the Lily. Because my situation is not super good, but like I have cards like Waste Knot that can maybe spiral the game uh, with Anvil or like Shouldred. My opponent has moved to their second main phase to cast Lily. I sacrifice this. And they've got a land. Um, these aren't good. Discard Dark Ritual. Batch a tapped Blood Crypt while I know my opponent does not have Opposition Agent. Now the selection does go both ways. Like my opponent gets to do the Anvil as well. Oh, they've hit a land drop. That's fine. On Waste Knot. I'll be getting rid of Burning Inquiry here. We'll play out a Douthy Voidwalker, which hopefully forces my opponent to minus the Lily. But, you know, they get a couple of looks for a Sudden Edict here. Alright, a Swamp has been discarded. Sure, uh, Douthy Voidwalker in play is very good here. I'll sacrifice my own. Alright, goodbye, Burning Inquiry. Sudden Edict away that Douthy Voidwalker. We're on an empty board again. Um, the empty board favors my opponent because, like, they have the, the first draw step here. But they are at the lower, lower life total, and my deck is technically built for the anvil, and my opponent's isn't. Uh, Karn's very scary on this board. Assuming my opponent has, like, a big old boat to fetch or something. I guess I can just get a fucking Microsynth Lattice. They're maybe supposed to just plus here, though. Just plus on nothing. Yeah, I think I would plus on nothing if I were them. They haven't seen, like, a Murderous Rider type card from me that can just answer a Planeswalker. I don't think you expose a critical card to a discard spell. They disagree. A Ratchet Bomb. Okay. Not a good draw for me. Discard the land. Play out a Lily. I believe I just lose to Mycosynth Lattice now. This is a little disappointing, but it is what it is. The Ratchet Bomb charges up. Right, my opponent discarded an Ancient Tomb, and then I'm just going to lose to Mycosynth Lattice here. Uh, yeah, there it is. So I'm not going to be able to uh, cast any more spells, or activate the ability of my Planeswalker, or anything cool like that. Eh, eh, eh. Uh, and then like my opponent can just plus the Mycosynth Lattice to kill me. Um, so this is the game. Um, and just talking about some magic theory here, Anvil of Begarden is a do-nothing card, and if this was any threat, like, if this was a one-power attacker, like, I think that would have been enough to win this game. Um, so I will concede. GG's.
and we end up with a 3-2 in this league. Overall thoughts on the deck list. Generally speaking, the mono black shell is strong. Generally speaking, every time that I have tried to do something cute with Shouldred instead of just playing good solid magic, I have regretted it. So while the whole burning inquiry chains anvil stuff is like super cool and can be extremely powerful and explosive, I think it's just worse than playing good magic cards. I think this is a time where the synergistic effects are not strong enough and are easily disrupted on multiple fronts, so you don't actually get to do the thing that many times. So, like, in sideboarding every round, these were the eight cards that I looked to cutting first, and while, like, the Burning Inquiries didn't always come out because, like, they did offer some explosive finishes, the Burning Inquiries, unless I have Waste Knot or Shouldered in play, do very little, this deck isn't even maxing out on Shouldred. Um, so if I were to play a red-black version again, I would play a fourth Shouldred. I would probably play a 22nd land. I got stuck not being able to get to four a couple of times, and it was super relevant. And I would play the fourth thought Thoughtseize, and I don't know what I would do for the final card. I'd have to think about it a little bit. I'd probably play a fourth Dalthy Voidwalker in the main deck just to open up another sideboard slot, or I'd play the fourth Sudden Edict. I think either one of those would be reasonable. Um, Guy Reach Sanitarium, admittedly, was way better than I expected it to be. Like, it plus Waste Knot was really good. Oh, also, we're not maxing out on Waste Knot. Um, I actually might play the fourth Waste Knot. Um... Although, like that being said, I don't, I don't in any world think that the red-black version is just better than playing a mono-black version. Like, consistent mana is very good, um, and although it didn't come up in this league very much because we didn't play against very many aggressive decks, like, Blood Crypt is a real cost. Like, playing that when you have rounds versus like delver or burn or some other aggressive deck like you are going to very much feel that um especially since like we are also a castle locked wayne deck and a thought seize deck um so like generally speaking the overall strategy here gets a thumbs up the particulars of the deck list i think get a thumbs down Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button. It helps out a lot. I hope you all have a great rest of the day. And if you end up wanting to mess around with this deck list or you want to get one of your own decks on the channel, remember all that information is available in the video description. See ya!